Uh, Thailand's young voters are likely to be a decisive factor in the outcome of this Sunday's general election. This will be the first poll since the 2020 youth-led protests that called for amendments to the constitution and reforms of the sacrosanct monarchy. The movement paved the way for significant changes to the political discourse in the kingdom. The country lowered its voting age in 2017, 18 years old, from 21. Now, that opened up a bigger group of young, eligible voters hoping for change. Four million people will be casting their ballots for the very first time. The largest proportion of votes will lie with the youth. Around 40% of Thailand's population are younger than 41, while 13% of voters are Gen Z. A similar story in the central region, home to the country's capital. 40% of voters there are Gen Z and Gen Y. Bangkok has 33 NPCs and has the highest number of candidates among the country's provinces. Different parties have sought to woo the youth vote, the Poor Thai Party promising a minimum monthly salary of around $730 for university graduates by 2027. The Democrat Party offering free tuition fees until the bachelor's degree. While the Move Forward Party plans to end military conscription, is all also calling for reform to the strict Les Majesty laws, supposedly protecting the monarchy from insult, but often used to criminalise criticism against it. Other parties have steered clear of this particular issue. But there are worries about growing distrust and discontent with the political climate in Thailand. Election watchers are quick to call out irregularities in the last elections following a 45-day result delay that saw Thailand's military hanging on to power. Parties will also have to deal with possible voter apathy among the youth as young Thais grow weary of hoping for change after years of instability, coups and violent protests. A one party that made a splash at the last elections in 2019 was the Future Forward Party, a liberal party that delivered the second best performance by an opposition party at that time. Uh, this election, Move Forward, steps into the shoes of the now defunct party. But can it succeed not just Future Forward, but also its appeal to voters? Three years ago, Thailand's constitutional court dissolved the Future Forward Party. The country's second biggest opposition party, led by billionaire co-founder Tanaton Chengrung Rungkit, was barely two years old at that point, but enjoyed a surprise success at the 2019 elections, thanks to young voters drawn by the party's liberal progressive stance. That's why many supporters saw the court's ruling over alleged campaign finance violations as nothing but a political plot to remove any perceived threat to the government. All its executives, including Tanaton and Piabot, are banned from seeking office for 10 years. But the remaining members carried on the work with a new Move Forward party, and a new leader stepped up to the task. Three years later, at a rally in downtown Bangkok. It's a rock star reception for Pita Limterenrat, leader of the Move Forward party. The Ivy League educated 42 year old is just one of many new faces that hopes to repeat Future Forward's election success four years ago. Despite the new name, it is still the same liberal progressive ideology, almost radical for Thai standards. That is one of the reasons why it draws in a notably younger crowd. That is also one of the reasons why it still draws the ire of Thai conservatives. Going into its second elections in its existence, the question is whether or not they can avoid a sophomore slump and whether or not they need to compromise on their ideals in order to have a shot to govern. These elections will also be the first since the youth-led protests of 2020 and 21 that have challenged the political status quo. The dissolution of the Future Forward Party may have sparked them, but activists soon called for a wholesale reform of the entire Thai power structure, including curbing the political influence of the military and the monarchy an institution considered sacrosanct in Thailand. The state soon cracked down on this unprecedented descent, charging hundreds of Thais, some of them with less majest, that punishes criticism of the monarchy with up to 15 years in jail per offense.
One of these activists is Chontisha Zhang Liu. She still has 20 ongoing cases against her. But that doesn't stop the Move Forward party for putting her up as a candidate in the outskirts of Bangkok, convincing voters her platform is more than just about civil liberties. While Shantisha wants to make that leap from activist to lawmaker, one fellow pro-democracy activist that has already done so is Rang Siman Rom, the party's spokesperson. His first four years as an MP have been an eye-opening experience. ความเป็นนักกิจกรรมทางการเมืองเนี่ยนะครับคุณไม่ได้รับเงินเดือนจากภาษีประชาชนประชาชนไม่ได้คาดหวังกับคุณในทุกเรื่องแต่พอคุณ
um, there's still room for up to between 30 and 40 percent for voters to be voting for more conservative parties. So and Dr. that Sensei, is not... Uh, pardon me for cutting yeah. in here. So in other words, the message we're hearing, so for example, uh, MFP, so Move Forward Party, which is... Uh, again, linked to liberal progressive ideas of the many things it's proposing. So, for example, legalizing, legalizing same-sex marriage, uh, scrapping conscription, of course, uh, most controversially reforming of the royal defamation law in Thailand. Uh, things like that across the board, would they be equally welcome in the north of Thailand or, say, in the relatively more conservative Muslim south? of Thailand? How would they change this message for the different young people across Thailand? I think Move Forward Party knows that for their candidates, especially the ones that are campaigning in the constituencies level, to be aware that not everywhere in Thailand is the same and not all young people want the same things across the country. So when they're campaigning in the Deep South, for example, when people are more religious and uh, there's majority Thai Muslims, they had in the past stay away from issues like same-sex marriage or LGBTQ issues and to focus more on the issues of the economy and equality and education and job opportunities that young people want. So again, I think despite the very progressive message across the board when they ref when they talk about it, broadly speaking in the campaign the constituency candidates are not all campaigning the same all right so when you say in fact our correspondent was talking about young people maybe being prepared or do they want to see ideals being kept too strictly or are they prepared to see some compromise so that political parties can form coalitions and then make the real kinds of changes they need to see to make a difference in their lives how much political machination are the young people let's say define them below 35 of thailand prepared to accept just to see real material change in their lives? I think they're prepared. Um, I think that there's low level of trust in politics, according to the youth study that I mentioned in 2021. The three, the, the three top three issues of young Thai people is the issue of better politics, uh, lower corruption, and lower inequality. These are quite broad. And a number of political parties across the political spectrum have promised to reduce inequality and maybe brightening up politics. So I think young people, even if they're more engaged politically, um, they, they understand that there's not going to be dramatic change overnight. But they also will not stop campaigning or protesting if they feel that their voices are not being heard. And that's what has been happening for the past three years, really, is that no matter what they believe in, they've really felt that the rest of the society are not listening to them and that their voice is not being properly heard. So I think we can expect that to continue forward no matter who's in power. Well, thanks so much for joining us this evening, Dr. I am Sinping from the University of Sydney.